slithering through the grass. The sound that many fear. A rattler, poised to strike, feared by man. The rattlesnake, known for its percussive tail and its venomous bite. A symbol of rebellion and freedom, as well as the center of attention at hundreds of rattlesnake roundups in the western U.S. Learn all about these pit vipers on this edition of Unspoiled Planet. Rattlesnakes are commonly found in North and South America, but are concentrated in the southwestern United States in places like Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona. They live in grasslands, scrub brush, rocky hills, deserts, swamplands, and meadows. There are more than 30 different types of rattlers, all belonging to the viper family. These cold-blooded reptiles can live to be 25 years old. Rattlers are called pit vipers because they have small holes or pits between their eyes and nostrils that sense infrared heat, enabling them to hunt in total darkness. Rattlesnakes tend to be loners that hibernate for up to six months through the winter. Some experts believe the rattle was developed as a warning mechanism to alert large animals like bison and horses not to trample the snake. The rattle is made of keratin, just like your fingernails and toenails. Notice this rattle is made up of interlocking rings or buttons. Some folks say you can tell the age of a rattler by the number of buttons on its rattle, but that is just one of many misconceptions about rattlesnakes. The fact is, the number of buttons on its rattle indicates how many times the snake has shed its skin. With each molting, a new button is formed. Another common misconception is that rattlesnake bites are often fatal to humans. Rattlers really have no interest in humans, but they will strike if startled. Unless you are actively trying to capture or kill a snake, the odds of getting bitten are very, very low. When a rattlesnake does bite a person, it is a serious wound that requires critical medical treatment. Oftentimes, when a rattler bites a person, it does not inject venom. They usually save their venom for their prey. The fact is, a venomous bite by a rattler is fatal only 1% of the time. It is commonly believed that snake venom is a defense mechanism, but actually, it is a part of the snake's digestion system. Venom is injected into prey through its hollow fangs. The amber-colored venom contains enzymes that begin the digestion process on the victim, breaking it down from the inside while the snake works on digesting the outside. This is what makes it possible for the snake to digest such large prey. They can swallow objects up to eight times larger than its head, like a cottontail rabbit. Watch this rattlesnake eat a rat. The snakes eat their prey whole, head first, by unlocking their jawbones. While eating, rattlesnakes are defenseless. With some prey, the snake will bite, inject its venom, release its victim, and trail it. Eventually, the prey is severely affected by the venom and stops, allowing the snake to start its meal. Rattlesnakes only eat when they are hungry. Adults typically eat once every two weeks. Juveniles eat about once a week. By flicking its quick forked tongue, 
The snake collects odors and passes them over a special smelling organ on the roof of its mouth. And with its heat sensitive pits, the snake can detect prey even in the dark. These pits transmit to the optic nerve, in a sense allowing the snake to see heat images. Another common misconception is that larger snakes inject more venom than smaller snakes. However, the size of the snake does not necessarily correlate to the amount of venom it may inject in any given bite. The amount of venom varies upon the current supply available. For example, a large snake that recently ate a rabbit may have less venom available than a small snake that has not eaten for days. The potency of its venom also depends on its species and habitat. Later on on Spoiled Planet, learn how to avoid a rattlesnake bite and discover what to do if you are bitten. Up next, believe it or not, rattlers are big money makers. When Unspoiled Planet continues, find out how people are making money off rattlesnakes and visit a rattlesnake roundup with thousands of rattlers. <laughs>
community last year took in over half a million dollars uh, through the Rattlesnake Roundup, and that included the money coming in on these grounds, plus the hotels, the convenience stores, etc. The main bulk of the money does come in out here, and I'd say a third of that goes to the nonprofit organizations that staff the food booths. And they are the nonprofit groups like the churches, the scout groups, the football team, the cheerleaders, the booster club, etc. And without the money that comes in through those food booths, we actually could not have scholarships, uh, football uniforms, summer camp, it even helped build a new Catholic church. Uh, there's just many items that could not function, including this Chamber of Commerce here. We are the sole sponsor of the Rattlesnake Roundup, and that is our main money-making project, and we would have to close the doors if we didn't have that money coming in each year. By design, Roundups remove thousands of snakes from the ecosystem, and some people believe that causes an imbalance that may create an increase in the rodents the snakes feed on. Others are concerned that the Roundups set a bad example and encourage animal cruelty. And one of my biggest fears in this kind of thing, when I see somebody crawl into a sleeping bag and his friends put five or six snakes in there with him, what's this three or four year old little kid going to think? They're going to think they can pick up a rattlesnake and do the same thing. And I think a lot of these well-meaning service organizations often that sponsor these hunts are going to be in big trouble about the time some little kid sees that and picks up a rattlesnake and gets bitten. Because where'd they learn how to do that? At the Rattlesnake Roundup. Whether or not you think Roundups are a good idea, they do provide a unique opportunity to experience rattlesnakes as well as snake enthusiasts. Professor Clark E. Adams at Texas A&M University has studied the rattlesnake population and the effect of Roundups on the ecosystem and the economy. He believes that the rattlesnake business has become so big that there should be some form of monitoring it. It's one of the only remaining forms in the United States that I can think of of unregulated commercial trade of a wildlife resource. Rattlesnake hunters and dealers can make a tidy sum off these serpents, sometimes in the thousands of dollars at one roundup. But some are more responsible than others. Bob Popplewell runs a rattlesnake ranch in Texas where visitors can come to see the snakes and learn all about them. His business depends upon a continuous supply of healthy snakes, so it's in everyone's best interest to maintain the snake population and avoid abusing them and their habitat. I'm proud to say now that most of our hunters are very rational when it comes to habitat destruction. They, they avoid it uh, every, every turn, and a lot of the hunters that we buy from are actual landowners, and they go to great lengths to protect the habitat, just like they would of their whitetail population or anything else. They wouldn't have someone cutting down a pecan tree when they harvest pecans, and they won't let someone come on there and, and gas a den or destroy the den. And I think that's good. It's good for everybody, including the snakes. While there are many people who believe the only good rattlesnake is a dead one, these snakes do benefit ranchers by providing rodent control. The eastern diamondback is the largest venomous snake in North America. Mostly, they live in the southeastern states and average five and a half feet long. The breeding season for this species is from August to September. The eastern diamondback rattlesnake reproduces by giving birth to live young every two to three years, usually in the fall. They deliver a brood of six to 21 young. The young are born complete with fangs and venom, armed and dangerous at birth. A good thing the mother abandons them upon delivery. Western diamondbacks are somewhat similar. They also give live birth. Growing up to seven feet long, it is the largest Western rattler. This is one of the most dangerous rattlers around, capable of delivering a fatal bite. The Western diamondback will coil, rattle fearsomely, and stand its ground when threatened. This species is responsible for biting hundreds of people each year, more than any other venomous snake in the United States. Up next on Unspoiled Planet, learn about other venomous snakes and what to do if you are the victim of a rattlesnake bite.
Rattlesnakes are not the only venomous snakes to be feared. One of the most revered venomous snakes is the King Cobra. It is the largest venomous snake in the world, growing as long as 18 feet. They are usually found in the forests of Southeast Asia, India, Malaysia, and the Philippines. The most recognizable feature of a cobra is its hood. When threatened, the cobra rises up, hisses loudly, and reveals its hood by flattening its neck ribs, flaring its skin and muscle behind its head to appear bigger and more threatening to predators. When a cobra strikes, it forces venom through its hollow fangs. Cobra venom is a neurotoxin, meaning it attacks the nervous system of its victim. One bite can paralyze and kill their prey within minutes, stopping the lungs and heart. Another extremely dangerous snake is the coastal taipan, typically found in Australia. Its plain appearance may lead some people to believe this snake is not particularly dangerous, but it is one of the world's deadliest. When attacking its prey, the taipan delivers an extremely swift and accurate first strike, injecting its venom, a fatal neurotoxin. Then the taipan retreats, allowing its victim to leave while the venom takes effect. After a short delay, the taipan trails its prey by following its scent, then devours its meal. Taipans eat small mammals, and like most reptiles, digestion is a very slow process, and they may go for days or weeks without eating. Here is a puff adder. It gets its name from its defense mechanism. When the puff adder senses danger, it can inflate or puff itself up to twice its normal size. It is a slow-moving, bad-tempered snake with the ability to strike very fast. Its skin provides perfect camouflage. Known for their deadly venom, puff adders are widespread in South Africa and are abundant in populated areas. A species of puff adder is the rhinoceros viper. With two or three horns above its nostrils, it appears to be a vicious, venomous predator. And in this case, looks are not deceiving. This snake also has incredibly colorful patterns on its skin and is often regarded as one of the most beautiful snakes in the world. The rhino viper produces a deadly hemotoxic venom. This venom attacks the victim's circulatory system, destroying tissue and blood vessels. The rhinoceros viper tends to move slowly and usually will not bite unless provoked or hungry. The snake opens its mouth, unfolds its long fangs, and as fast as lightning, strikes its victim with deadly accuracy. This snake can control when to unfold its fangs and when to inject venom. Also called the river jack, the rhino viper can grow to be two to four feet long, but it can puff up to twice its normal size. Venomous bites are nasty business. According to the Merck Manual of Medical Information, in about 25% of all pit viper bites, venom is not injected. Most deaths occur in children, older people, and people who are untreated or treated inappropriately. Rattlesnakes account for about 70% of poisonous snake bites in the United States and for almost all of the deaths. But actually, snakes would rather avoid humans. Just imagine the difference in size from their perspective. Humans look very intimidating to a creature on the ground. Jim Stout is a snake collector in Texas. When he was 17, a rattlesnake bit him on the thumb. By the time I made it to the hospital, my hand was, was swollen um, such that all my fingers touched, all the skin touched on my fingers. And uh, my thumb had turned black. Uh, my arm was swollen probably twice, maybe three times the size it, it started out. Um, and uh, it was... Um, I, I just can't emphasize how painful something like this is. Uh, and it was a little embarrassing, too. With a little common sense, most snake bites are avoidable. 
Here are a few tips to avoid snake bites. Before entering the wilderness, become familiar with the snakes in your area, both venomous and non-venomous. Learn about the habitats venomous snakes prefer and are likely to be found. And of course, use caution when entering those areas. Use the buddy system. Don't go out alone into areas where you expect to encounter venomous snakes. Wear boots to protect your feet and ankles. Avoid surprising a snake. Stay on trails and watch where you place your hands and feet, especially when climbing or stepping over fences, large rocks and logs, or when collecting firewood. Don't put your hands in places where you can't see. It is also wise to carry a snake bite kit like this. This kit extracts venom from the bite using a suction pump. If administered quickly, this kit can greatly reduce the amount of venom in your body. A kit like this can also be handy to treat bee stings and bites from other insects. Medical professionals treat a snake bite according to the condition of the patient, keeping a close eye on the rate of swelling, blood pressure, and pulse. If there is massive swelling and a drop in blood pressure, doctors will usually administer antivenom. However, antivenom is not always the answer. It is known to cause allergic reactions in some people, and it's usually only effective the first time. If you have previously been bitten by a venomous snake, antivenom may cause a severe reaction the second time. Three to five vials of antivenom are usually administered in an IV with fluids. This treatment usually does the job, but using antivenom may cause some side effects later. A venomous snake bite is a serious matter and tough to treat. Sometimes victims lose limbs and even die. Now you know all about rattlesnakes and why they should be feared as well as appreciated for their unique features. But don't forget, they would really prefer not to encounter people. As dangerous as they are, some people certainly seem to welcome the confrontation on this unspoiled planet.